Atlantic City, New Jersey, once the gambling capital of the East. For a time, it essentially had a monopoly on East Coast casino gambling, though this has changed drastically, especially over the last 20 years, and not for the better. This is what happened to Atlantic City. Atlantic City has had a long history as a resort and entertainment destination. Its first successful period was in the era of Prohibition, where much illegal gambling and alcohol consumption took place. During this era, it also established itself as a resort and getaway destination for many on the East Coast. After a long period of decline, a second successful era began in the 1970s when New Jersey became only the second state in the U.S. to legalize casino gambling, which would only be allowed in Atlantic City. This meant that the city would be the only location for casino gambling outside of Nevada and east of the Mississippi at the time. The resort's casino would be the first to open in 1978. This would make casino gambling within a few hours drive of many major East Coast cities, such as New York City, Philadelphia, DC, Baltimore, and Newark. With the exclusivity that Atlantic City provided in casino gambling, the city ballooned into a destination tourism location once again, with over 10 casinos within the city at its peak. Though it did not attract the same tourism numbers as Las Vegas, throughout the 80s, businessman Donald Trump was able to draw tourists through the hosting and promotion of large boxing matches, many featuring boxer Mike Tyson. All seemed well for Atlantic City as the 80s decade closed, however the next decades wouldn't quite bode as well for the city. While Atlantic City would still hold a large place in the casino gambling landscape in the East for years to come, other states began to catch on to the tax benefits of casino gambling over the years. With nearby states, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Michigan, Maryland, West Virginia, New York, Ohio, and others all legalizing casino gambling since 1990. Also, the not-too-distant Canadian province of Ontario legalized casinos as well, helping boost Niagara Falls as a destination tourism location for casino gambling. All of this would add more and more to the pool of competitors. With casinos opening in so many locations nearby and distantly nearby, the crowds and demands for gambling in Atlantic City began to fall, and the casino closures would follow. In 2014 alone, four casinos would close. Some would rebrand and reopen later on. One of those four, The Revel, was only open for two years and cost over $2 billion to build. This one would later reopen as Ocean Casino Resort in 2018. But the peak years for Atlantic City seem far behind it. So what happened? First and foremost was the loss of the virtual monopoly the city had on Eastern U.S. casino gambling. Then there were other smaller factors such as the Great Recession which further stressed the casinos. The novelty was simply gone in an ever more oversaturating industry. But why is it that Vegas can get away with basically the same model despite this oversaturation? Vegas is a much bigger city to begin with and has a reputation and environment so strong it has essentially been immune to this same decline. Vegas is an experience with the strip, the unique buildings, and other nearby attractions such as the Grand Canyon and Hoover Dam. Atlantic City is simply a place to go gambling, with not much particularly exclusive to the area nearby. Today, there has been discussion about having casinos in other parts of New Jersey, which would further put a bind on Atlantic City. Today you have a city with a questionable and likely bleak future. Time will tell, but it seems that the gambling capital of the East is just becoming one of many. Thank you for watching.